Sure, thank you for having me. So first and foremost, um, I took a very traditional education path myself. I went to a public high school in Pennsylvania. I graduated near the top of my class. I was well involved during high school. And then I got into the United States Military Academy at West Point. I served five years in the military. I had some great experiences there. And that propelled me into the Stanford Graduate School of Business where I got my MBA. Throughout that time, I had always worked with helping kids all the way from uh, coaching my brother's big league basketball and little league baseball teams uh, to doing various types of mentorships. I worked at an orphanage in Bulgaria. I coached a high school football team in Germany. Um, I was a mentor to numerous kids in East Palo Alto when I was at Stanford and I was on the board of a nonprofit, child bereavement nonprofit in New York. And then, um, you know, I was also working with college admissions, helping people at my two alma maters, West Point and Stanford, uh, helping those kids get in there as well. And so I had always been toying with, on the side, helping children in whatever capacity I could. And after a year of investment banking, I decided to look for a company to buy after I graduated from, West, uh, from Stanford. And something just pushed me into looking in education. I figured, why not just take my passion of helping kids and turn it into a career? So I was looking for ways to play in the education space, and I got really involved in the education reform movement, vouchers and charters, and I started looking at charter management organizations to buy. And during that process, I, just, I was reading a lot about education, and I just stumbled upon homeschooling and unschooling, and the more I looked into it, the more I realized that all these education reforms, uh, the charter schools, the vouchers, what they were really doing was they were going to move the needle a tiny bit on a really bad and flawed system. And by focusing on helping children extract themselves off out of the system, that they could actually have a much more robust academic experience and much better life outcomes. So I ended up shutting down the fund that I was using to look for a company to buy. And I moved to Austin, Texas to be near the epicenter of the education revolution, I guess mm. you could say. And I began to help homeschoolers. I became an advocate for homeschooling and unschooling, helping consult those families to step out of the system and seek better alternatives. And then a year ago, I decided to uh, go back to school and I got my master's degree in education at Harvard University with the sole intention of going there to create a new company to help accelerate the alternative education movement and help take millions of children out of traditional schools. And that company is a bro. Abroom is an online learning community where learners can go to network and connect with other learners and learning coaches who are the Abroom employees so they can identify their needs, goals, and interests. Once they identify those needs, goals, and interests, the learning coaches and other learners help them identify learning experiences that will help them move towards solving their needs, goals, and interests. What's critical about a Brome is that we don't do any instruction. There's no coercion, there's no teachers, there's no students. We don't even use the terms. We don't use the term schooling. And it's all about the learner creating their own life and having full agency over it and utilizing the resources that they have access to to really build a remarkable life. And although we are an online learning community, it's essential, and we say this very forcefully with our learners, that their learning community extends beyond the Abram learning community. And we ask them to specifically identify people within their physical community where it's parents, relatives, neighbors, local business owners, local tradespeople, community leaders, who are also going to be critical parts of their learning community so that they can identify ways in which to grow um, away from the screen, which is really critical. We don't let them in front of the screen very often. Awesome. Now the last part here is just if you could share, you have uh, you know, a lot of experience working with the youth and working with parents. 
Um, and a lot of parents, they do see the problem with the traditional educational system. Uh, they might not be able to identify the problems, but what would you say to a family who is on the verge of homeschooling or trying to do some unschooling or kind of venture out to um, a quote alternative um, model of education and they don't have the courage or they're a little bit concerned about you know how it appears to their friends if you can just take a minute or two just kind of to share you know what your insight can um, kind of empower them to uh, take the leap right I think first and foremost what parents need to understand is that schooling is actually very harmful to children what it does is that it, it's an oppressive system, even though many teachers have great intentions, um, but it's a very oppressive system. It's where students go into the school and they're told to sit down, shut up, raise your hand if you want to talk. You're only allowed to talk for the five minutes between class, maybe a cafeteria, maybe at recess if you get recess, and that there's an authority figure that tells you what you should know. They, t they give you the right answer, right. and it really takes away that self-determination, it takes away the notion that I am a valuable individual who has uh, a lot to give to the world, to one of which I am a stupid, ignorant person, mm -hmm. and I need to have my brain filled with knowledge from some curriculum or some teacher. And so it just puts them on a path of being docile, being a follower, and just falling in line. And then it just becomes natural that the, that the student then measures themselves by terms of what kind of grades they can get. And if they get great grades, then great, they feel good about themselves. They're not learning what they need to be learning. They're not leading their own life, but at least they're not being deemed stupid. But the majority of the kids are being deemed dumb or slow, and that's horrible in of itself. Another thing is, is that we're taking kids away from the world. We're segregating them from the world. We're saying, you are not good enough to be in the world. So here we're going to throw you into a building with a bunch of people your own age and in 13 years we might let you out and then we might throw you into college but then at that point you become an adult and then you can become a part of uh, society. So I think it's really bad for their, for their personal development and growth. We take them away from the adults, we take them away from the elderly who they can learn so much from. Uh, so they become docile, um, they uh, are, are segregated from society and they lose their intellectual curiosity, which we're all inborn with. As human beings, we're constantly trying to figure out the world around us when we're young, and then we throw them into these schools where that's actually punished if you're asking questions. And so then they just start to fall in line. And that just leads to many problems in the future where they're always deferring to authority. They're always seeking out other people's answers so that they don't look dumb. And it just, that is, the basis of so many problems within our society and what happens to children. So what I have to say to parents is if you're afraid of taking your kids out of school because of what other people might think or because well will they get into college, all I can say is that if you take your kids out of school at the very least you're probably not going to do any worse than what the traditional school you're going to do. And for most people you're, you're going to end up doing a lot better. Your relationship with your kids are going to be a lot better. Their academic, their social, social and their emotional development uh, will be far superior. And what most people don't know is that these children, by the time that they're 18, by the time that they're 14, they can be working on skills that they can use for the rest of their life uh, for their profession. They can actually make a living as a teenager and start to build those skills that will set them ahead in the marketplace. And there is no good university in this country that would not embrace a homeschooled student or an alternative school student who comes to that university with an extremely high level of intellectual vitality, a desire to seek out the uh, answers within the world, and who have accomplished something. And if you allow your child to go into an alternative education space or homeschool them or unschool them, that's where they can actually create those opportunities. So uh, by every measure, really, taking them out of the traditional schools and allowing them to lead their own learnings, uh, you're going to actually drastically improve 
their quality of life and their future life outcomes if, if you do it in a very uh, thoughtful and purposeful way.